Hey, welcome back everyone to your Kansas City. The new skipper of the Kansas City Royals has never played or managed in Major League Baseball, but he is currently managing the Nippon Ham Fighters in their second consecutive Japan series appearance. 44-year-old Trey Hilton spent 12 years as a manager of the Yankees minor league system and won three Manager of the Year awards. Can he have that same type of success here in Kansas City? Here to answer that question, D8 from 10, 6 and 4. What is a Nippon Ham Fighter? I wish I knew. <laughs> because I think I love this sport. Like, I, yeah, I know, I know. Seriously, but we joke about the Nippon He's had success. And they've just beaten the Chiba Latte Marine. So <laughs> any league that has a ham fighter against the Chiba Latte, I think is my new favorite baseball. I agree. Well, I have to start by uh, asking you about that. But seriously, he is a force, apparently, and people are excited about him coming. And rightfully so. He comes with a, a great background check. I mean, the Yankees organization actually really, really loves him and respects him. Spent about 12 years in their minor league system building his way up and then took the job in Japan a couple of years ago. He was on the Yankees short list. I don't know if he would have gotten that job because right. he's such an unknown. But still, I think Royals fans, understandably so, optimistic about this. And I say, I listened to this press conference. He was not like happy, giggly, glad to be here. No. He was like, we're going to win. And I thought, my goodness, he is serious. Yeah, Trey Nolan is all business and not a guy that's going to be a great soundbite like Herm Edwards. Okay, yeah. But a guy certainly that is here to win and I think that's all that Royals fans want. They don't care about animation. They don't care about soundbites. Right. They just want to win. I mean, look at the look on his face. There is no joy here. That's, the, that's what a ham fighter looks like. That is what a, yeah, apparently a nip on a ham fighter looks like. Um, tell me what the players are saying. What are they saying? Are they happy? Are they the players are happy just... because uh, well, Mark Keane and John Buck were two uh, players that kind of came out and spoke publicly about an early morning meeting they had with him the day he was in town. He flew away from Japan, got back on a red eye, and went back to Japan because he's happy in the World Series now over in Japan. And they said they like his direct attitude, and I think the players will feed off that. Another thing that's really going to be a benefit for, for Trey Hellman coming over to Kansas City is his work on fundamentals. In Japan, the work ethic is far superior to what we have here in the States. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to practice all hours of the night. They go right. forever, and they work on everything. Twenty four hours a day. And exactly. And they work on the little things. The Royals, obviously, are in dire need of being able to do the little things right. They're not the most talented team. They have to make sure they beat other teams where they can. Only one man could have overshadowed the announcement that we have a new manager in Kansas City, and that is Buck. O'Neill. So I've been smiling all day. It's a wonderful story. It would have been nice to see this happen while Buck was alive. You think? At the same time, though, you know, Cooperstown has taken a lot of a lot of slang down around here for for what has happened with with Buck and not getting it done before he was. Well, let's bring everybody up to speed. He falls right. two votes shy of getting into the Hall of Fame. There is this huge uproar here because who these two people are? Look, I don't know. But how is he not in the Hall of Fame? They come out uh, last week Thursday and announced that finally they are naming a special award in his honor. It will be the Buck O'Neill uh, Award that will then be presented every year in his name and in his honor, as well as a statue um, in, in Cooperstown. I guess just your thoughts about, you know, you don't want to totally dwell on the negative and the delay. It would have been nice for him to have seen this. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, some people might dwell on the negative, but if Buck taught us anything, it was, it was to dwell on the positive. And, uh, and the positive is, like you said, a statue in Cooperstown, which is far more than a simple plaque on the wall. Right. It's a, it's a legacy award. It's a lifetime achievement, which I think is so appropriate because Buck wasn't the greatest player. He wasn't the greatest coach. No. He wasn't the greatest manager or the greatest scout. He was all of those things really, really well, plus an ambassador. It was about his legacy and his lifetime worth of achievements. And, and to honor him through that and then other players through right. that, I think is the perfect, perfect way to honor And him. nothing says it more. You know, we ran this down this morning, VA, after he found out he wasn't getting in two years ago. We ran this out of him just saying how pleased he was that the other Negro League players were getting in. And, and you do have to remember that, that there was never any bad feeling or bad blood. And he actually went to the ceremony. I mean, that says so much about it's, him. Yeah, it's kind of an incredible irony. More people are upset for Buck while, while he was alive and right. now than he ever was, you know, and, and he always taught to be positive and to be happy and appreciative, and, and I think that is the great lesson of Buck O'Neill, that, you know, I guess good things come to those who wait, maybe a little bit late for him, but for him, he was never resentful, and, and I think that's an important thing for us to remember, not to be resentful about we what he's doing. remember and just be so happy about it, yeah. and I tell you what, I, we interviewed Willie Wilson this morning, uh, a bunch of folks down at the local museum, and the one thing we always remind people, all he wanted was for people to go to the local museum. Yeah. So if, if you want to honor Bob, go to the museum. Uh, my final question, can the Jayhawks be beat ever? I say no. I would say national championship this year, maybe next year, Dynasty of the Making, Dana. And every year after. <laughs>
We'll see. Going down to College Station will not be easy. We'll see. They're doing very well. Yeah, they are. It's amazing. We'll end on that note. VA, as always, thanks so much for joining us for your Kansas City. A reminder, your Kansas City is your show. Send us your comments, your suggestions, and show ideas at KansasCityKCTV5.com. We will be right back. Thank <laughs> you.